Okay, hello everybody. Today, uh, I started doing a little work action, realized I'd forgot to hit record, but so, oh, hello Mallory. So if you remember last time we finished off in the live stream building these out, I will be putting some silicone underneath these to hold them still. This is gonna be a grounding connection to here. I've got another grounding connection here, etc. So I've got the, t I grabbed the 2.2K resistor I need that will come off of the um, output of this last one and connect over to two 10 microfarad capacitors. Now, one of the things that's pretty cool to me these days, and I've already set, I, I put a three-way strip in there and put them in there. Uh, it used to be in the old days that Dumble did this, he had a huge can capacitor and he, you know, he's jumping these two 10 microfarads together. Um, oh my gosh, Max. <laughs> my dog Max is going nuts. But I'm gonna run a piece of wire. Basically, I'm gonna connect this guy since I have two, two points on the end of this one. I'm going to connect this resistor between those two points and then I'll have a lead that comes off of that that will connect over to here. And, uh, and these are small uh, um, enough that I think that they'll be okay as long as they're both you know well anchored on two sides into this tag board. They're not the big heavier ones like this. If anybody thinks it would be smart, I can put a dollop of uh, silicone under there to give them a little bit of support, I guess. Um, but there's also plenty of room for me to put the board in there. So this, this is working out pretty well that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys in there and then we'll kind of go from there. So, so. I did get myself a new pair of Haco pliers that will make this some of this stuff a little nicer too. But uh, the, the only thing I was a little bit bummed about with these was that they are also, sadly, I'll have a little bit of texture to them, teeth. And that's why I've been using this one is because it has no teeth. Uh, and in general, when I'm doing certain types of work, you don't want to use teeth because it will mar the leads and potentially damage them. Well, I'm only using them to, to pull up leads that aren't, you know, the ones that I'll be snipping away. So that's okay. So, but I've got that guy in now, as you can see, and then I'm going to run a lead from here over to here. So let me get, oh, another thing I did today as well was I quickly sanded out um, so I can drop this guy in there as well. We'll potentially get that in a minute too. Um, but I did just notice... I somehow or another lost my deburring tool. I was just using it the other day and now I can't find it. But if I go in here and kind of carefully jerk off these little bits of sharp metal from the steel chassis, I'm good. Now, that was something that's been actually hard for me was this chassis. This steel chassis is, wow. I mean, drilling this thing is definitely way harder than any aluminum chassis I've worked with on a regular basis. But, all right, that's probably enough. So let me get a little bit of a lead. I'm going to turn my fan on now because we're about to do some soldering here because I'm going to solder this, these two connections and then the connection here. Uh, but I'm also going to do a jumper between here and here and then I won't solder that in. I will solder a ground wire again there. Again, I do have a ground here, but I also, I don't assume that that ground screw, just like on this tag board, wouldn't potentially over time get corrosion or get loose. So I'm also soldering a ground lead to that and I will ground that where Dumble says on his design to ground it. Um, I don't think that will be a problem having the double grounding going on on these layers because the biggest thing I've seen with grounding myself is and what he was doing is the highest current highest like potential noise sources like the power tubes are grounded away and then away ways away from the input and the further the, the lower the current the lower the power the closer you can get to grounding towards this and then my main inputs can be grounded over on this side on purpose to keep that away. It's also something that um, I've done and I really enjoy, uh, found works well is just grounding things um, away from the, uh, you know, your power section over here is where you ground all the power outputs and all of the preamp stuff you can then ground over by the preamp stuff. Now this filter level is going to go in and I think connects into the, the phase inverter. That's why this one's a little bit over here. And then, um, well, no, actually this is, these are the phase inverter, I think. There's the two stages by the, the screens and the phase inverter, if I remember right. These may be for the preamp, so that's fine. There's one other that will end up going over in this section as well. And that is the last one, and that's another one of these guys. But we'll get to that one when we get there as well. Uh, all right, so let's see. I needed to get myself red lead. And then I will turn my fan on and we'll start soldering away. Getting this soldering thing soldered.
myself a little bit of black for the ground wire there. Now some of these wires are look a little willy-nilly, but I will try and come back later and do some lead dress to clean things to look a little bit prettier. Like for example, this one, I will probably get a nice, you know, once it's glued in, get a nice right angle coming across so it looks a little bit nicer, etc. So, but let's see, ground wire. I really wish I had the kind of um, ability to be as uh, as completely perfectly neat about everything on this wiring like I see some guys do. They look, it's more like a work of art than, a, than an actual amp, but I have sadly not found that skill yet. Connect down under the board to that go. I think it comes basically across and then to about here under the board. So we'll figure that out then when we get to that point. The board, where is the board? Anyway, the board is going to sit about in here and that will connect into the point where there's a couple of 100k resistors somewhere around in here. So that will just effectively come down under the board and then connect into that spot there. So hopefully I made that long enough. We'll find out if I didn't and then I'll be annoyed at myself. Oh no, that's my jumper. Sorry. This is supposed to jumper just between these two. I'm not even thinking right. I'll probably just run a separate wire. Okay, so that will jumper. That will jumper between here and here. And I will clean that up once I've soldered it, but for now. Oops. And then I'll take a lead off of that, but we'll get to that point later. I can run that wire at the time and solder. Um, so we now have most of the power filtering done, except until I get the board in, which is, as I said, I'll do when I get to that point. Um, I'm now going to try and uh, install this board. Uh, and this board, I will kind of do the pictures over the shoot shot here when we're looking at it. But this board goes on this left side, and it's for the power supply for the... Um, so that will go basically here like this. I've drilled the holes. I just need to get myself I think I'm gonna have to go into it this way because I don't have a lot of room on the outside of this. So let's see if I can pull this off without too much pain. What I might do is put a teeny bit of tape across those to hold it in place. Maybe I can pull this off if I'm just careful. All right. Oh, but I do need to solder. Oh, I need to first solder these guys in. So let me do that. If I remember right. My... Uh, Yes, the transformer goes into these two taps. So I'm gonna to need to first solder these guys in here and here. So we'll go here. And this one time, due to the way this is set up, I'm going to kind of solder from the back side a little bit first, attack them at least in, and then I'll go from the other side and try and see that, if that makes sense. Look at that from the top side, see how that looks. 
Well, that's pretty good. All right, so let's snip off the excess leads. And we are in business. All right. Oh. Uh, now that I've done that, I'm realizing I didn't put wires in for my foot switch jacks and getting those in and soldering them will be a nightmare. So I've got to pull that back out long enough to fix that later. So, so much for the fun I just had doing all of that. Whoops. But anyway, I'll tighten these down for now and I will come back later and worry about that. All right, there we go. So that will ground somewhere and these lead off to some other leads somewhere, but we'll worry about that later. All right, next, uh, let's see. Um, one of the things I gotta figure out, this is a good volume potentiometer. I did decide to move this switch over here. I'll have to kind of play with that a little bit, but I'm gonna have my two input jacks here. I've got um, another guy here. I need to take some of this stuff out because I'm realizing these are the wrong values. So what I'm going to do quickly is stop recording, flip this around so we can start looking at the front panel. So we'll get that going now. All right. So next we are going to look at the front panel and get that sorted out. So as you, as you know, I'm going to put the, one of the inputs here. One will be fat, one will be normal. I'm going to get this as the bright switch, I think, on the left side. Then I will put two more switches in here that are going to be the um, the rock and the jazz. And they will also, I realize, be switches as well. And I've got some sitting around somewhere. I'd have to look for them. But I don't need to install those right now because I've got to figure out, you know, some of that. But those will go there. Then I need to put um, my... Oh, let me think here for a minute, though. So this guy is going to be, I didn't pull this one out, but that will probably end up being, i got to look at the number of holes here and hope I have enough. So I've got um, treble, middle, base, OD level. Oh, man. Hmm. I'm just trying to think through because because now I may end up needing to drill another hole about in here because I've got to get, uh, I'm drilling through this chassis is definitely not fun, I'll tell you. But um, because I've got to do, I've got volume. I'm going to have my two inputs, volume. Um, I might need one. I want to do treble base. Well, but i got to do the two switches as well. But I don't know. Maybe I'll put, since these are small switches, I might put them here and here. It will be my rock and jazz. And then I'll have treble middle. I'll put a third one here. I'll have to put for base. Then I need, um, these were inputs and they're kind of too close together to really be using as anything else. So I'll probably skip those. Uh, and then I, this could, is not enough for a hole, right? So then I could do uh, overdrive level, overdrive ratio, master and presence, and then just kind of ignore that one, I think. So um, I will have to kind of figure all those out. But the one thing we can do right now, at least until I drill a hole, is we're gonna turn this guy on to resistance. I'm going to look at some pots that I have here. Oops, as I knock one on the ground. And I'm going to see the fender ones that came with it. I think most of them covered the range that I need. So I'll be able to reuse those. So I'm going to actually turn off the fan now since we're going to be looking at uh, resistance. So the first one I need is going to be the treble, which is going to be a 250K. It's always fun trying to do this part. All right. So that is 175K-ish, I think. And then, I don't know, that's definitely not one I need right now. I might need it, I might not, but we'll look. All right, so this one is 234, which is basically 250. Okay, and these do vary a bit. So that's gonna be my treble. So we'll go ahead and put that right in here.
tighten that up in a little bit. And then for my middle, I need 100K. Let's see if I can find my middle. And then I'll drill a hole for a base label, but I'll set aside the base pot. And we'll get to that in a bit, but I'm just trying to get all this set up here. And this one's a one meg, which I will need potentially later. And I did check this one is my volume. So this one also I think is one meg, we'll look. Yep, that's a one meg pot. This one is a 10K roughly. It looks like it's 8.5, but I think that's supposed to be a 10K. And I did need, I think a 10K somewhere, didn't I? Maybe not, because the presence is a 2K on this one. I think I, I found a 2K pot. It was kind of hard to find one, and it's kind of an odd one that it's got, it's got like detents that you can feel, which I kind of like because you're rotating through the range, so you can kind of feel bit, bit, bit as you roll. Um, all right, anyway. That's a one, oops. One meg. That's a 10K, oh, is that one already red? That's another 200-ish, 250-ish K. That would be the my middle, or my base pot. So that'll be my base pot. Seems like I might have had to order 100K. I don't think it, I don't think it came with a 100K. Go look. That's another 250K. All right, so let's see in my box of treats. I think I might have. 100k pot in there because I don't think I've had any. <laughs> 100k. Yep, I've got my an alpha. Wait, that's a 500k. That's interesting. Did I misread something? I need 100k. I might have shorted myself one here on accident because I need 100k for the middle, and I need a 100k for the level, and I need 100k for the ratio of the overdrive. But it looks like I only have one, but I could have sworn I was assuming that this guy was going to come with. I went and actually measured all the pots. Um, this is my little 2K, I think. Let's check. Yeah, that's the 2K. And this one is a 500K. I'm going to check the schematic because it's possible that the 84 schematic is the one that has the um, that for it. Let's look. Uh, trebles 250k, mid is 100k, yeah, and base is 250k, all right, so that won't help, but the Odeber drive is 100kb and 100k, oh no, that's 100k trimmer, 100k alpha for level, all right, so I, somehow or another, of course, as usual, missed the order, and I'll have to order a couple more pots, um, I always find something that I end up doing wrong in the process, but all right. So, um, so the 100 K, um, B is supposed to be the overdrive ratio. So if I said I was going to do treble mid base, then this was going to be overdrive level and this is going to be overdrive ratio. So I will put that in there and I will have to go back to the drawing board and order myself a 100k audio oh interesting um, that is something that I was wondering I was having a hard time getting this out I think it's because of the brass but I wonder if these are 
Oh no, they do fit. It's just there's like the brass that says there's a brass backing here. It looks like it's a little bit off. So I'll have to fight and sand that a little bit. We'll do that offline. But um, so I'll be have to adjust some of those guys. Um, well, sorry about that, guys. That's the them's the brakes. So today, I think I'm trying to think if there's other things that I can actually tackle right now easily. Um, I'm going to have to put in an order to get myself a few more pots that I forgot about. Let me go ahead while I'm thinking about it. I keep wanting to pull this off and I keep forgetting. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. I did go ahead and drill some holes in here, and I'll tell you why. There's actually, I don't, these aren't the right ones, but there are some specific um, ones of these guys, because the Dumble, the way he did these is he connects them right next to the socket for all the direct cathode and anode and, and grid stoppers and all that stuff. So, but we'll get to that. Um, well, guys, um, as you can see, though, you've heard me kind of walking through some of how I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to have to get a drill bit that size, which I'm sure I have one. I'll look and see. And I will have to drill a hole very carefully, like right here for the base. And then I'm going to have to order my... And I will also have to kind of resize these uh, holes a teeny bit. Because it seems like when they installed the, the copper, they didn't do a very good job of it. So I might have to do that. So anyway, all right, guys. I guess that's all we're going to get for now. I will uh, be back with you soon once I've had a chance to dig through a little bit more of this. So thank you very much, guys. Have a good one. Um, please give me a like, give me a thumbs up, and a subscribe. Cheers.